Steve Dotto here. How the heck are you doing this fine day? Today on Ask Dotto Tech, we are going to start out by talking about dealing with nasty and not so nasty apps that may change your browser settings all without your permission. We're also going to look at LastPass, using it on both your mobile and in your desktop, and sharing your passwords with someone who you trust, say your spouse. And finally, we're going to take a look at the difference between the different video networks. We're talking YouTube, Wistia, and Vimeo. Answers to questions on all those topics today on Ask Dotto Tech. Ask Dotto Tech is the show where you ask and I answer questions, at least to the best of my ability. Now you can post questions here on YouTube, you can post on our Facebook page, or you can tweet us. Our address is at Dotto Tech and make sure you add the hashtag ADT. Now we've got three great questions this week and two of them are actually security related. The first comes from Michelle. She posted it here on YouTube and she said, Steve, here is a new question. I've always had Safari as my browser and have not changed it. However, now when I search, it's using Yahoo instead of Safari to search. Do you know why? Well, Michelle, I've got a few ideas and it, hopefully this is something innocent, but it may be the sign of something that we should be concerned about. Now, in your case, I do suspect that it's nothing to worry about, but when you install different extensions or apps into your browser or your computer, uh, sometimes they will change your preferences. Now it can be as, as just something fairly innocent, which is merely irritating, but it could also be the sign of something a little bit more nefarious. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to head into your browser and when you go, I'm going to show you this in Chrome, uh, but this uh, things are essentially the same in all of the different browsers. I want you to go into your browser settings and there you're going to find two different settings that I want you to look at. The first here is search. You see, I have it set for search and you can actually use a variety of different search engines is your preferred search engine. It's probably set to Yahoo here now. So I want you to switch it back to Google. Uh, and once you've done that, I also want you to go to your startup page. Now I go get to my startup page here where it says open on a specific page or set of pages. I have a set of pages that open, but I want you to check this and see that it's not something unusual. Just set it to something neutral. You could set it to your business page or to Google, uh, your Google homepage or to Gmail, but just set this to a single page, which is a page that you know. Then I want you to restart your browser. If you restart it, and everything and when and you go to search and you search with Yahoo, then we've got a problem. But if you search with Google, as we said it, then you're solved. It was just something changed your settings once and you can sit back, enjoy, relax, have a Guinness and it's all done. But if it has changed to Yahoo, then we've got to dive in a little bit more. The next thing I want you to do is go back into your Chrome settings, into your extensions and turn off every one of the extensions that you have. I know this is a pain in the parallel port, but we have to determine which of these extensions, or if indeed it is one of these extensions, that's changing your preferences. So turn them all off, then go through the same process that I just did. Changing your, uh, changing the uh, search engine back to Google and making sure that the home page is set to whatever you want it to be. Oh, by the way, if the home page is changed, that's a real sign that the, that it's probably one of these extensions that has messed things up. So again, once you've turned off your, all of the extensions and then reset to the neutral settings, restart your browser and see what happens. If you have Google now as your search engine and the proper homepage, then it's one of the extensions that's causing the problem. And you have to kind of go through by trial and error, turn on and off each one until you discover the one that's causing the problems and then send them a nasty note and never use them again. If however, you are still, your settings are changing at this point, that's the sign of something a little bit more serious. You have something installed, you have some malware installed in your system. If after turning off all the extensions, you're still going to a different search engine. In that case, I'm not gonna dive into it here and now because it, there's just too many variables. But if you look in our description here or in the blog post on our website, we will link to some resources where you can go through and you can start to clean out and discover what malware you have installed and the, what you have to do in order to remove it. It's not a quick, it's not gonna be a quick fix. 
It's going to be slightly frustrating, so you might want to pour yourself a glass of wine and settle in for the long haul. Be patient. Work your way through it. You will be able to solve it, but it is going to take some time. I wish I had some better news at this point, but we do wish you good luck, and thanks for the question, Michelle. Now, coming up, we're going to be talking LastPass and YouTube, but first, I want to invite you to our weekly webinars. Every week here on Dotto Tech, we put on Webinar Wednesdays, where I teach you about everything from productivity to social marketing, life in general. I give you fashion tips, food advice, and a tiny bit on relationships. Just click on the I button, which should be right about here, or visit us at dottotech.com slash newsletter, and we'll let you know about our upcoming tutorials and events. I hope to see you there. Okay, up next, one of my favorite topics, LastPass, which is a password manager, which I think a lot of, and one that I use on a regular basis. Now, we've posted several videos, and Steve saw one of the videos and says, looks good, but I have some questions. If I install LastPass on my MacBook, does it sync with my iPhone, or do I install it there as well? Also, can my wife and I share this somehow, say, for our Amazon account? Uh, yes. Okay, Steve, great questions. So first of all, when you install LastPass, you install it in your browser, whichever browser you have. And here you see it installed in my browser and it installs uh, to basically give us access to all of our different web accounts. The content or the data is stored partially on our local computer, but some of it's also stored in the cloud. If you want to access your LastPass passwords on your smartphone, you just install the LastPass app on your smartphone, and then it will sign into the same account as you have, giving you access to all of your accounts on either your smartphone, either Android or Apple, or on your desktop. So that you're covered on that, but you do have to install the custom app on your smartphone. Now, the question of sharing your passwords with your wife or someone you trust is a good question. And it's one of the really nice features of LastPass and really good password managers overall. I'm just gonna click on my LastPass settings here and I'm gonna go into something called My Vault. My Vault is where you manage all of your different passwords. And it basically opens up a browser window that has all of my passwords here. And if I go and take a look at any of these different passwords, I can choose one here and by hovering my mouse over top, you can see that I've got the option to share it. There's a little two person icon that indicates that it's for sharing. I just type in the recipient's address of the person who I want to share it with and then providing they have a LastPass account, they can then save this access in their own LastPass vault. Now you can determine whether or not they have access to actually see the password or just access to the account to be able to click and log in with the settings being pre-populated but hidden from them or you can allow them to see them. You can also revoke access at any time in the future. So you can give somebody temporary access to one of your accounts, or you can give them more permanent access. You have total control. But certainly in the case of a family, this is ideal for you to be able to create one password, say for your Amazon account, and be able to share that with your wife. And that would be no problem whatsoever. I need to thank you very much for that most excellent question about LastPass. And our final question today comes from Grant, who uh, says, Dear Steve, I have a small question for you. <laughs> he made a play on words because his name is Grant Small, and he, he said small there, a small question, I guess. It's funny. Uh, not sure whether this should be a subject or a video on Ask Auto Tech. I've been using YouTube. However, I've also investigated two other services, Vimeo and Wistia. What are your opinions of each, and how does the use of different mediums change the strategy? Or should we use them with different strategies? I do understand that YouTube is owned by Google and it would all in, like, in all likelihood get greater results in Google search and Google analytics. As an experienced content creator, I would appreciate your view on this. Grant, great question, love it. So let's, let's start with YouTube. YouTube is in my mind, uh, while it is certainly a great video distribution network, it is also a search engine. It's primarily a search engine, in my opinion. Uh, people go to YouTube and they search for content. So anything that you're creating which is designed to be shared publicly, you're gonna really uh, want to share that on YouTube rather than the other two networks. Vimeo does try and create a lot of sharing on their network, uh, but it's nowhere near as broad a reach as you get on YouTube. It's got some communities of interest, uh, but it basically if you're sharing on YouTube, you're going to get discovered far more readily than you will on Vimeo. 
Vimeo. However, Vimeo does a great job of gating your content, protecting your content that you don't want to necessarily share where you want to control exactly who has access to it. It does a better job of that than YouTube. So if you've got videos that you just want to share, tutorial videos, videos that are part of a course or part of internal training or part of something that you want to keep a little bit more private, Vimeo might be a better choice for you than YouTube. And Wistia goes even farther into the controlling the video. If you do course related content, if you really want to gate your content and protect it and aren't too concerned about sharing it widely publicly, but you want total control, you want to see the analytics, you want to know who's viewing them, you also want to be able to control when and how they view them, then Wistia is a terrific choice. All of them now have terrific technology as far as streaming and the quality and the bandwidth and how they adjust the, the frame rate depending on what the feed is. They all work very well. They all give you tools you need in order to properly and effectively share the different links and the different videos or post them into your own, into your own website. Uh, but by primarily, the ranking is if you want it publicly shared and you want it to be discovered, YouTube. You want a little bit of sharing, you want control over it for online courses, etc. then Vimeo or Wistia are going to be the best choice and it comes down to price and performance at that point for you, whatever, whatever one looks like it's going to work best for your, for your particular setup. Grant, thank you very much for that question. And that is all the time we have today on Ask Dotto Tech. A reminder, if you have a question for us here on Ask Dotto Tech, you could just post it right here in the YouTube comments. And while you're at it, giving us a nice thumbs up would be appreciated, I can tell you. Also, you can tweet to us, go to dot, uh, tweet at, at Dotto Tech and make sure you add the hashtag Ask Dotto Tech so that we can see that it's a question. As I say, we will do the best job we can to answer as many of your questions as we can. Until next time, I'm Steve Dotto. Have fun storming a castle.